قائل إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد جزاكم الله خيرا beautiful sisters amazing invitation mashallah and amazing um, sisters to speak to may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and um, take us all out of Ramadan like my sister Amina was saying with عتق uh, من النار that were already released alhamdulillah from fire and with rahma from him mercy and forgiveness and maghfirah Allahumma ameen um, today's topic inshallah as announced is about ways to stay out of shaitan's way or ways out of shaitan's way so for that we're going to talk about who is shaitan and what does shaitan want how does shaitan pursue what shaitan wants or what he wants and how to stay of the way some sisters already let me know that the um, the topic is big and maybe we're not going to finish it all uh, in the limited time we have but if we can today then inshallah we can have other um, part two if the sisters are allowed if uh, my sisters um, Amina and Dr. Amina and everyone that administering inshallah will allow maybe we could have so let's start who is shaitan so I would I want you to take a part and answer from your knowledge who do you think shaitan is so please write on your uh, text can see answers yet our enemy okay iblis jinn okay our nafs no okay I will, I will answer inshallah at the end. Can you still all hear me? Yeah. Devil test. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, shaitan, some, some uh, suggested that the rejected one, the whisperer. Okay. Okay, some suggested that shaitan is our nafs. I would have to say no, I'm sorry, shaitan is not our nafs. Um, some suggested that shaitan uh, um, is the devil or our enemy, the one who refused to obey Allah's command. Okay. So, and one answer, or I think maybe two, came with that shaitan, and then they put comma and then jinn. So that will take us to the verse in Surah Al-Kahf. Uh, verse number 50 when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ Iblis was or is from jinn how what happened with Iblis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he created the earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created many jinns and they were living on the earth but after some time they started uh, killing each other and corrupting the earth and messing about and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to uh, punish them so ma majority of them were punished and the rest that were left on the earth were sent out to the oceans or to other places not on the land the mainland and Iblis was actually a good one he didn't mess or kill or did what they did so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a reward to Iblis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him to the heavens he saw he could see the angels, he could mix with the angels. Um, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after some time, after all the, the jinn were punished and Iblis was in the heavens and all that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to create a new creation because Allah's purpose is to have someone to inhabit this earth. فيها, to build the earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the angels, khalifa, for sure you know all the story. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam from clean, clean that was mixed, which is clean means uh, dirt or dust that was mixed with water. And it was collected from varieties places from the earth and formed that huge 
uh, creation. Was, Adam alayhi salam was about 50 meters or seven arms, let's say. It's not seven arms, 70 arms long or tall. So it was a huge creation. And Iblis was looking, what is that? You could go inside of Adam. The, 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 after Allah SWT formed Adam alayhi salam in, from clay, it was left to dry for some time. So Iblis would come, kick, uh, kick Adam and go inside and outside of it. And what is that? So they didn't like it at all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his ruh, put inside Adam and then ordered all the angels to prostrate to Adam. Iblis was there. He heard, Usjudu, all of you, to Adam. Iblis did it. Various angels heard the order, all of them prostrated in sujood. Of course, this sujood is not as an act of ibadah, as you all know. It's an act of honor to Adam, alayhi salam. Iblis refused, and Iblis uh, expressed his refusal in that situation in varieties of ways, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them all in the Quran. So first way, he said, liman khalaq he's, he's speaking like that directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's saying, do you want me to prostrate for what you created from clean? That's... That's the first. Second, in another in another surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when he said, Isjudu li Adam, fasajadu, all the angels, sajadu. And Iblis said, Ana khayrun minhu. Ana khayrun minhu. Khalaqtani min narin wa khalaqtahu min teen. I am better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from teen. So, Ana khayrun minhu, you will find and this is one first clue about getting out of shaitan's way, understanding this, these three words. Iblis said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Usjudu li Adam, sorry, I'm repeating again. Iblis said, Ana khayru minhu, as an excuse not to honor Adam by prostrating to him. So as many of you said, it's our enemy. He doesn't like Adam at all. Not, the, not the, the tiniest bit, but there is something else in shaitan that we have to, to be aware of. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in a different verse in the Quran, he said, shaitan adu mubin. So yes, you said his enemy, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it's a clear enemy. It's the enemy that you can find the ways that he uses. In the Quran, the ways are there. We're just going to find them out and take clues to stay out. So, first way out. If you think that you're better than someone else, or if shaitan, let's say, whisper to you that, this is the shaitan way. Why this is how he disobeyed. When he said, Ana khayrun minhu. I was created from fire. As, like he's using that, that as prove that he is better. If you compare between two ch children of your own and one now believes that he is or she is better than the other one, shaitan is there. Thinking, so thinking that I am better than you or you thinking you're better than me or I think we're, or we think we're better than the neighbors. This thinking better is shaitan, means shaitan is there. So how to stay out? First, saying, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, remembering, as you remember your hasanat or your goodness in, in many aspects, remember that other things that you cannot do. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed some to do, uh, like very skilled and very talented to do something, and others don't do it, but they do other things that the first ones are not skilled at. To keep it all, not one th that they could think, I am better than the other. I heard some children, they would say, I am better than my brother. Of course, our, our duty as parents is to stay out of Shaitan way. That's the first way possible. And as we discuss now, leave out I am better than, or leave out thinking or believing or putting in one of the children that they are better than the other in any other way. 
don't compare between your both children because when you compare the one that in the comparison in their favor will think they still that they are, they are better what happened in the story of Yaqub alayhisalam and Yaqub alayhisalam is a prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he he gave him vast knowledge he uh, loved Yusuf he had 11 different children he loved Yusuf alayhisalam he just wanted to just, to stay him to look at him all the time if Yusuf alayhisalam would go out to play he would say bring him back the other children thought that he is better than them and they plotted to kill him and you know the story just to sum this point up first way to stay out of shaitan way is not to think that you are better not to compare yourself to the others or the others to yourself in a way that makes you feeling oh i am i'm better in, in that in that sense children wise don't compare don't let one child think that they're better than the other Okay, so in the story, going back, so that was the reason Iblis, al-istikbar or al-kibr or thinking I am better. That was what prevented him from sujood to Adam. So, is he ka'adun mubin in a sense that he declared openly that he doesn't like Adam? Can you, can you answer that? Did Iblis declare, say it loud, I don't like Adam like by not doing suju to him, by saying a better than him, yes or no? Yes or no? Type for me, please. Yeah. Okay. Yes, by refusing to suju to perform suju to Adam, which is a suju of honoring, he refuses that this honor goes to Adam. He wanted that honor for himself. He thought he's that, he's that good because he was raised from the earth, because he was a good jinn. So he, he thought he's better than Adam. So how come he prostrate to Adam? It means if he prostrate to Adam, if he admitted to that, it means Adam is better than him and he didn't want that. Okay. So then Iblis asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for time. Iblis asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to give him some time to prove that Adam, uh, that he is better than Adam by misguiding or misleading all descendants of Adam to fire. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first said, go out of it, get, get out of, of here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him out of his mercy. That's why it's called a regime. As, as, as all of you said, he is a regime or out of Allah's mercy and then he said you have what you what you ask for which is that time whatever whoever follows you from them then Jahannam is going to be for you shaitan and for everyone that follow you and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equipped Iblis with every possible way that he could mislead children of Adam why because is that Iblis there to challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to say he can actually mislead all children of Adam and take him to the fire with him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, all right, that you find that in Surah Al-Isra and verses that start with verse 61, if you keep reading from there, when he said, do I prostrate to whom you created from clean? And then he he said, if you just give me some time to Yawm Al-Qiyamah, I will take all his descendants, all his zuriyah to Jahannam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْرِكَ وَرَجْلِكَ وَشَارِكْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَارِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Like, go and try with, with all, every way possible. خَيْلِكَ وَرَجْلِكَ In Arabic means every way you could um, go to them or share with them or whisper to them or mislead them, use it. And promise them as well. And but then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said at the end of the verse, "Wama yaiduhum shaytan illa ghurura." They, they are. He is just deceiving them. But then at the same place, if you if you're reading with me in from that translation, Surah Al Isra, Shaytan said, "There are few people of your ibad that I'm not going to have any power or authority on them." It's again declaration from Shaytan. He declared that. Although he wanted to take all the children of Adam to 
to to Jahannam, but there are few that he cannot have access to. And the second way now is going to come, which is mukhlasin, those that are sincere. So if you, for your notes, you already have this first way out of Shaitan's way. Second way is to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to be sincere? Or what is sincerity? To, have, to be pure as a crystal about what you want or why you want it. So if um, you're getting up now to pray your Asr, Salat al-Asr, you're thinking about every step, oh, I'm going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm having wudu to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You won't pray thinking about dinner or thinking about the children. That, not that that's not going to happen. It is going to happen, but you're going to try your best to stay on track. There is a shaitan, um, on his, the, that shaitan's job was given from the main shaitan, Iblis. It's called the shaitan of the prayer. Only, it's called Khinzab. His name is Khinzab. His only job is to st distract you from prayer to the point that he could actually help you. You see what? For example, if you lost something before the prayer and you're still thinking about it, Khinzab will find it for you, like it will, will get you the thought. It's in that place. Why? For you to rush to the prayer or through the prayer and you end and to go to find that, to, to look, to see if it's in that place or not. That shaitan is called Khinzab and this is his job to distract you even by helping you. Can shaitan help? Yes, in this way. Is shaitan, and this is very, very important to know, is shaitan honest about what he does, or what he wants? Not about us, not about Adam. Is shaitan honest about stating exactly what he wants from human being or not? Yes, in what sense that he said it clearly. I don't like Adam or the children of Adam. I will take them to the Jahannam. How much clearer is that? I will try every way to take them to Jahannam with me because he knows he's going. And um, he found out that there are people that are sincere and he's honest to say, I'm not going to have a way to them. You see? So that's your second way out of shaitan way. Be pure, clear about what you do, when you do it. If you found when you're about to do something that shaitan came into it, Say out them stardim, sit, take a deep breath, do a lot of istighfar, do a lot of tasbih, and read Qul a'udhu bi rabbi nas, maliki nas, qul a'udhu bi falaq min shari ma khalaq, and then try again. Shaitan can come into that area of sincerity because he knows if you're sincere, he cannot access you, he cannot penetrate that wall. Sincerity is a wall that keeps shaitan out. He will say to us on the day of judgment, Exactly. He would say that all what I did to you is just invite you and you just followed me. That's it. I just showed you another way to do things. You did it. It's not me. That's in Surah Ibrahim. Jazakallah khairan. Hadith reference to Khinzab. Yes, inshallah. After, after the um, session, I will. Okay, the length of Adam السلام, is mentioned in the tafsirs. I, I will check if the, there is a hadith about the length. Yes, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. What surah are you talking about? The surah I'm talking about now? Okay, we are, we are still talking about the, the verses in Surah Al Isra. When Allah SWT tell, told, uh, or the, oh, we mean the last one about that he calls and we, yes, that's Surat Ibrahim. Okay. But he as well and saying the Day of Judgment, You're not going to help me and I'm not going to help you today. I didn't do anything. I didn't have any power in you. I just called for you to do something and you listened. You see? That's it. Inshallah, we post the uh, references, inshallah, after. All right. So 
third way out of shaitan way how, how much time we have inshallah we are we are in good time so um third way is in surat al-a'raf so if you start reading the surat al-a'raf starting with verse number 12 you will find the verse that says Ana khayru minhu khalaqtani min narin wa khalaqtahu min teen. And after that, if you continue on reading on verse 12, you will find how shaitan declared, how, is go how shaitan is going to come to a human being. So he said, I'm going to come to them, la'atiyannahum, min bayni aydihim, from in front of them, wa min khalfihim, and from behind them, wa an aymanihim, and from the right, wa an shama'ilihim, and from their left. So he's going to come from how many directions? To human being? Exactly. And how many directions are there? How many directions around you? No, they're not four. There are six, exactly. So the two directions that Shaitan missed, and of course didn't dare to say he's going to come through them, are above and under or above you and under you. you cannot come from these two ways why above you have connect connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and under you can reach to with sujood so when you are in the sujood shaitan cannot go there between you and your sujood in your in your, in your prostration uh, position shaitan doesn't come from there and when you call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you lift your hands up, shaitan doesn't come from there either. It's a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim You see, when you start your Quran, first thing you say, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Why? You are a, ch a child of Adam, right? We are all children of Adam. And shaitan doesn't like or actually hates, he's an enemy, he, he, said, it, he said it clearly, he doesn't like children of Adam nor Adam himself. So for sure, he's going to try and disturb you while you're reciting Quran. So the first thing you do is to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, from shaitan. He's, go because he's going to try everything to distract you, to make you fall, that you're trying to fall asleep. You will actually fall asleep to, to keep you away from reciting. Uh, above you, I have here a question. Oh, why does it come from prostration, you say? Be because you're in, when you're prostrating to Allah SWT, you have the dua to connect with Allah SWT. So it doesn't come from under. All right. So, so now this is the third way out of shaitan's way, knowing that shaitan doesn't come from all directions. According to this verse in Surah Al-Araf, Shaitan come, can only access four, and there are two clear from Shaitan. And Shaitan saying that clearly, that I'm going to come from this, this, and this. Yes, I will explain inshallah later. Okay, so we, we need to stop here. Or can we take a few minutes more to one last way to stay out of Shaitan way? Okay. Um, one last way to stay out of shaitan way is to know what shaitan is after. So in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 268, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. It, you actually will find the word shaitan in the, in the head of the verses at the beginning. Shaitan promises you poverty and orders you with fahsha and fahsha means to do um, what is fahish and fahish means very ugly very bad could be in manners could be in in communication with others everything that is bad um, is under fahsha um, so this is what shaitan orders with or wants so when it comes for example to your zakat or to giving a gift to someone or to help a neighbor, a neighbor. Shaitan will come first and say, if you give them, you'll be poor. You will lose, lose your money. Oh, if you help, then how much you left for yourself? You see, every aspect 
that you're trying to like grow, shaitan will come with the poverty way to keep you out of it. You will be poor, you will be sick, it will come to you with the negativity part. This is the third way that I'm talking about now to know that sh what shaitan is after. Shaitan is after calling you to negativity. One of them, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Baqarah, verse 268, calling you for poverty and ordering you with everything that is beyond bad. Fahsha. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the same verse, Wallahu ya'idukum maghfiratan minhu wa fadla. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you forgiveness and bounty and blessings. Which way are you going? So shaitan way, you will find there signs or callings, hey, you're going to be poor or stay poor, something like that, or sickness or doing something bad or horrible. That's shaitan's way. Allah's way has forgiveness and blessings or bounties. Wallahu wasi'un alim at the end of the verse. Did I answer your question, sister? Uh, the sister that asked about the third way. So when, when what you're doing has something to do with finance and you find a, um, a thought the same, you'll be poor if you do, you know it's straight on. It's not you, it's straight on. Okay. Um, so this is the third way we're going to cover today. So we mentioned the first way. Stay away from ana khayrun minhu. I am better. Comparing. As a parent, don't compare between your children. Um, second way, sincerity. Be sincere. Be clear about what you want and how you want it. When you do your prayer, when you do your Quran, when you do your salat, always check in with your heart and ask Allah SWT for guidance. Third way, knowing that shaitan will come to you from poverty, threatening you with, that you're going to be poor or you're going to be sick, not to, to, to withhold you, like to hold you back from doing the right thing. And knowing that shaitan doesn't have full access to you, can access only four out of six directions. That gives, that gives a relief because and inshallah, if we have an, another part of this lecture, we're going to, um, reflect more on that. Jazakumullah khairan. I will leave inshallah time for questions. If you have questions, Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallah alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah alhamdulillah. Things you didn't understand, please go ahead. Or, uh, or question related to this topic. Subhanallah. Jazakumullah khairan. You know, I was feeling really tired before this session, but I just feel so much more empowered and strengthened. And I just feel awakened all of a sudden. So Jazakallah Khair Ustad the Nisreen. I think the best, the best way to take questions, the sisters, if we could, um, if you could raise your hand, there's a raise your hand function, or you could put it in the chat box and we will try and take questions inshallah. So either raise your hand or pop it in the question box and we can take questions. Is that okay Amina, do you think? Is that okay with you Ustada? I'm, I'm fine. Jazakumullah khairan. Okay. So Barakallah fiikum, my sister. Jazanallah wa iyaakum. May Allah accept from us all. Allahumma ameen. And ameen. our fasting and our good deed and our intention to be here together. We are in so many places, but subhanallah, we managed to be together at these moments. Barakallah fiikum. Subhanallah. You've drawn a crowd of a hundred Sisters, subhanAllah, Nisreen. May Allah Allah bless Allah us all. Allah. 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 I think Sister Sabra has her hand up. Yeah, Sabra, would you Go like ahead. to speak? Go ahead. Uh, she'd like to ask a question. She's 12 years old. Safa, in, in one of the surah in the Quran, they don't... Um, it doesn't start off with "A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaitan Ar-Rajim." Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. How come? Very good question. Jazakallah Khairan. Okay, so you are referring to Surah At-Tawbah. First, yeah. none of the surahs of the Shaitan, uh, none of the surahs of the Quran has written on it "A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaitan Ar-Rajim." Actually, all the surahs 
have Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim on it except one surah. Okay, I'll repeat again. Your question is, how come there is a surah that doesn't have Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem? And what I'm saying is that there is one surah that doesn't have Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. All the surahs have Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You can say Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem in every surah, including the one that doesn't have Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in it. So if is the, your question is um, why the surah doesn't have Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, right? Because you, you still can say Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem in that surah, which is Surah at tawbah Surah number nine. It started with the word Bara'atun, and Bara'a uh, min Allahi wa Rasulihi ila ladina ahadum na mushrikeen means Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is free from those that are assigned association or associated with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So bara'at means they are out of Allah's mercy. Therefore, you cannot say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman, means the one that has the mercy over everything he created. And you say after that ar-Rahim, the one that has the mercy over those who worship him. And then after that you say bara'a. It doesn't go together, it, doesn't, it contradicts together. That's why you will not find Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim on top of Surah Al-Tawbah. But you can say "Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan when you start. Does that answer your question? Does that answer your question, um, Sabra and Safa? Is there a Sabra? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan. All right, go ahead. Next one. If, if I think we had Razina's question was next, Ustada, um, and then we'll take a question from Maryam. Um, yeah. Razina's question was that regarding the Kareen, her do we all have a jinn attached to us? How does this relate to shaitan as they imp inspire us to do evil? Jazakallah khair. Okay, so Kareen, one of the tafsirs of it is what uh, the sister is saying. That is a jinn that is attached to it. Okay, so you have to be uh, clearly sure that there is no jinn attached to you. It's not like that. Qareen has some tafsirs. One of them suggests that shaitan send, send for you um, a shaitan to, to be behind you and around you all the time. Uh, and of course, shaitan is from jinn. Shaitan originally is jinn, right? Um, and another one. Qareen means, another tafsir, Qareen means a bad companion, any bad companion, you see, that can, all the time you're trying to do good, and that companion pull you away from the good. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that's one of the, in Surah Al-Safat, the, the verse you're referring to, or the word you're referring to is in Surah Al-Safat, inni kana li Qareen, there was a Qareen for me. And then in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what the words that the Qareen say, and of course, you don't hear these words, means that Qareen in the surah, it's not attached, as you said to you. So there is no jinn attached to anyone. According to the Quran, this word Qareen can be translated as a jinn, which means shaitan, or can be translated as, uh, or understood as, a, a bad companionship or companion. So, does that answer your question? You're asking about what, what the Qareen is, what we do to stay away from the Qareen. Is that the question, uh, my sister Amina? Um, so, I think, uh, I, I've just asked that sister, it, it, does that answer her question? But it's okay. good to know that actually, we don't have someone attached to us. Because that's quite a scary thought, isn't it? To have yeah. a Qareen attached to us it's like we have no escape subhanallah exactly and and shaitan himself said that there is no way between him and the mukhlisin so is the qareen for the mukhlisin to do so if if we think this way if you are sincere then shaitan cannot penetrate that wall that, that wall of sincerity shaitan cannot access so it means qareen can be can mean a shaitan and can mean a bad companion subhanallah is that okay. Sister Maryam, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum um, So when you're saying about um, not thinking about uh, the thoughts, as soon as I get the thoughts that I'm better than that person, that's the shaitan coming in. 
isn't it okay to some extent have that feeling of when someone's doing something that Islam doesn't permit for me to say to myself, oh, I'm better than that person to help me in the right way to motivate me to do better. Is that not okay? Or is that still the influence of the shaitan coming in? Okay. Um, it, what okay is when you witness someone doing something good and not good, sorry, and you do it. So you say, Alhamdulillah that I'm do it, I, that I can do it. But at the same time, you have to watch two things happen at that time. First, yourself, because yourself can take the role of the shaitan. And that, inshallah, as we said, if we'll have another chance to speak about this topic, we're going to discuss that. Shaitan doesn't um, misguide and mislead people all the time. People has a role too in that. So when shaitan, uh, when the thought comes, I am better, then other um, feeling will come like, I am superior and I can do actually these good things. I am good. Um, Qarun, for example, Qarun was a person from, uh, lived in the time of Musa salam, lived and was very, very, very rich. The story of Qarun is in the end of Surah Al-Qasas, if someone really wants to check it out. And he was rich to the point that people would carry the keys for his treasures, men like four or five men just carrying the keys, not the treasure, to open up the chests. The keys will, will be carried by strong men. And it will tire them as well, according to the verse. But what the, why am I telling you this now? It's because Qarun thought that he is good. He said, I was giving this treasure because I have knowledge. It's a reward or it's a given to me. I deserved it because I have knowledge. And he, he had like amount of treasures, the, the clothes he would wear, everything. He would, um, he would refuse to help others. And he would keep that to himself, just showing off what he has and saying, I am better because I have knowledge. What knowledge he's referring to? Knowledge from the Torah, you see, which is a religious thing as you're referring. To. So matter of religious or not, if the thought comes, I am better, Shaitan have an open door to play. But if the thought comes, Alhamdulillah, I am doing this. Alhamdulillah, that made me made it made it easy for me to do it. Then you are praising Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and asking Him to continue blessing you and doing it. That's a completely different thing. I hope that is clear. I hope that answers the question, Maryam. And very good question, Mashallah. Um, may Allah, you know, help us if we are doing good to do better and protect us from falling into ways of error, subhanAllah. Um, we had sister a question from Sister Rukeya. Are you okay to stay on, Ustada, or do you have to go? What time is it? It's quarter past five. So I, I, yeah. I can stay two more minutes. So two, one last question or two, if they're quick, please. Okay, so why do we get waswas in Ramadan, Ustada? Okay, it's according to the Prophet's hadith. There are two versions of the hadith of chaining the shaitan one said shaitan shayateen, shayateen are chained and the other one said that both of them are true hadith the other one said the uh, chiefs of the shayateens are like the heads the big heads of them are chained so there's still other shaitan going around first second we still have our nafs and we have a role in uh, the waswasa according to surat al-nas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, waswas in khannas. Every uh, sister, I, when I work Quran word for word with, we come to the surah, before even we go to verse 6, when we come to waswas, I tell her, what do you think waswas means? She says, shaitan. And she, the surah didn't say shaitan, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to say shaitan, he says shaitan, right? In the, the many surahs that we read now. But waswas means the one who whispers. Now look at verse 6. It says what? Minil jinnati wa nas. From jinn and from people. And you are people. You are human. The waswasa doesn't only come from shaitan, according to Surah Al-Nas. Waswasa comes from you as a human being and other people too. You see, Allah SWT say, مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي وَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ Nas and jinn, 
do waswasa. So in straight line, in sorry, in Ramadan, you have waswasa that can come from yourself. It can come as ideas that others uh, pass to you. It can come from the other shayateen that are not the heads, but they're still around. At the, they're a bit less power. They have less power, but they're still around. But they easily go if you say, and remember who you are and what are you doing. And remember that you're staying in the way of Allah SWT and build the, war, the wall of sincerity. Jazakumullah khairan, my sister, barakallahu feekum. I'm so happy and so blessed, alhamdulillah, all of us to be here among you and for all of us to be here together. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us um, with a happy ending of this beautiful month. It was a special month with everything that went through in it, subhanAllah. Uh, may Allah accept our ibadah. May Allah bless our time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us knowledge and success in this life and the hereafter life. Allahumma ameen. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place light in our hearts, in our sights, in our, between our hands, behind us, and, and from our life, uh, right and from our left. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us among the salihin and muttaqeen. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilahi lant, astaghfiruka tubu layk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A heartfelt heartfelt thank you Ustada for joining us for blessing us for improving and increasing our knowledge inshallah we um, will ask the Ustada I think she's left now I think she might have a class um, to if she can to join us tomorrow how do you sisters all feel about that we were going to cover another name of Allah um, by our beloved coach uh, Rabab but it's you know this this series is for you we're here to serve you um as best as we can so uh i think we would uh so sisters do you want to have nasreen actually have we asked amina have we asked ustada if she can join us tomorrow no we haven't and when oh, i first okay. asked her in a week she was free on wednesday and thursday so i don't know for tomorrow okay we, okay actually uh, we have our class don't we with her tomorrow with us coaches so mm, i'm not sure what she's doing after that okay we will find out what whatever allah decrees is best for us inshallah we will find out sisters and we'll let you know um but jazakallah khair for joining us i pray that it's been beneficial and you know uh, one thing, Amina, did you want to say anything? Um, Alhamdulillah, no, I don't. I'm just so pleased that um, you have all benefited from um, Ustad and Nisreen. We have been benefiting from her and she delivers in such a beautiful way that you can't help but love her as well as the way that she shares knowledge, you know, for the sake of Allah. Um, so I'm really, really pleased. I know all the coaches are that you've benefited from from her in the way we do alhamdulillah alhamdulillah um I, I i want to make a request sisters and a personal personal request that in the last day or two of ramadan that you make dua for sisters seeking salam you make dua for all the coaches that are behind the scenes wanting to serve you if this is good for all of us the coaches and you sisters, if this is good for all of us, may Allah make it easy for us to continue. May Allah um, facilitate it for us and guide us. So sisters, we need your du'as. We really need your du'as. We need your participation. We need your input. So please make du'a for us. And if it is good for us, then may Allah pave the way. SubhanAllah. Because we you know this been is such a blessing it's been such a blessing to be one of the co-hosts with you along with our beautiful all the remaining coaches it's been an honor and really and truly i know for sure that i'd love to continue if allah blesses us with it and my final reminder to you sisters is that the three calls they are one of the greatest and biggest protections for ourselves and our children and our families the three calls the best thing that we can do my sisters is recite the three calls morning and evening after every fard salah and before we go to sleep 
please adopt this sunnah. Allah has given us all that we need to protect ourselves. He doesn't give us shaitan and not give us the means to protect ourselves, my sisters. He's given us everything. He's given us the tools. We don't need to be fearful. We don't need to be afraid when we have Allah and the blessings and the gifts that Allah has bestowed us. So the three calls, my sisters, morning and evening, after Fajr and after Asr three times, after every Fard Salah, and three times after Maghrib and after Fajr as well, and before you go to sleep. So you know what, sisters, those of you that may be taking regular medication, you know, you don't go to bed usually without taking your medication. Don't fall asleep, my sisters. Try very hard. Shaitan will whisper to you to fall asleep, to forget it, to leave it. You'll do it later. Don't fall for the waswas of shaitan. And Ayatul Kursi is one of the best ways to protect yourself from the jinn. Ayatul Kursi. Teach yourselves. Learn the tafsir. Learn the meaning. Teach your children, my sisters. Subhanallah. And actually, sisters, some of the duas from the morning of Kar are so amazing to seek protection from shaitan. There are so many of them. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. Recite this ten times. You're protected for the rest of the day from shaitan. Subhanallah. You're protected for the rest of the day. Subhanallah. There is another dua that says, اللهم إني أسألك العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة. اللهم إني أسألك العفو والعافية في ديني ودنياي وأهلي ومالي. اللهم استر عوراتي ومن روعاتي. اللهم احفظني من بين يدي ومن خلفي وعن يميني وعن شمالي ومن فوقي وأعوذ بعظمتك أن أختال من تحتي. At the end of this dua, which forms the morning of Kar, we ask Allah, O oh Allah, guard me from what is before me, behind me, my left, my right, and above me. And I take refuge in your greatness against being struck down from beneath me. SubhanAllah, if you don't know these duas, my sisters, I urge you, just Google the morning adhkar. Just Google it, download a PDF, start reciting the morning adhkar. They are the best means of your protection, your defense against the shaitan. And the final dua I'd like to share, my sisters. Allahumma alim al ghaybi wa shahadati, fatir al samawati wal ard. رب كل شيء ومليك أشهد الله إله إلا أنت أعوذ بك من شر نفسي ومن شر الشيطان وشركي وأن أقترف على نفسي سوء أو أجره إلى مسلم. We ask, O oh Allah, knower of the unseen and the seen, originator of the heavens and the earth, Lord of everything and its owner. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but you. I take refuge in you from the evil of my own self and from the evil of shaitan and his inciting towards shirk. I take refuge in you from bringing evil upon my own self and harming any Muslim. Subhanallah. Beautiful duas, my sisters. Beautiful duas. Google morning and evening afkar if you're not familiar with them. Start reciting by Fortress of a Muslim. Let's defend ourselves with the correct defense, with the correct means of seeking protection from shaitan by Allah, only with Allah, remembering Allah. And on that note, my beautiful sisters, have a blessed day. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. نشهد الله إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته